Hi, I'm Peter Kamström of Kamström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will talk about sending out emails with flow, and those emails should contain links back to the item. Because so often you want to notify people that there's a new procedure, as in this example, in the HQ communication site, and you want to notify them via email, but you also want them to interact with the documents, so you want to send them a link. So I've already created a flow that does exactly that. And I'm going to show you the result here. This is an email that comes in with links to, of course, the name of the, the file, and then links to edit the document, show document properties, edit document properties, version history preview document, and create alert. So let's go through these links and just click on them and see. Edit document takes you directly into edit mode on the document. And of course, show doc properties. Properties would be, of course, the column values for this one, showing that in the disk form. And then we have the edit doc properties, which takes you into edit mode on exactly the same document. And then we have the version history, always a useful one. I only have two versions of this file here, but that's a, one, a good one to point out. Then the preview document, and that's exactly the same that. I'm using in another window here on the presentation here, as you see. So if you don't want to invite the user to start editing, then this one is slightly faster to open and less of a risk, of course, that people change is something that they shouldn't. So uh, that's the preview. Let's go back to my mail again. And finally, we have the create alert, which is a powerful one. And that is certainly something that you want to invite your users to use, the create alerts get notified whenever something happens. So those are the different links that I want to show you. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Of course, these are HTML links. And there is a not built-in HTML editor in the Flows editor. So I'm, I've used Visual Studio for this. It's very basic HTML, just anchor links. But I don't think you want to see me typing all of those. So what I'm going to do is just enter the parameters that are relevant. So, um, so, that, so I'm going to just going to copy and paste all of this. So let's go in and do this. So we want to create a new flow. And here's one that I created before, but I'm going to start from blank. And when you want to get notified about files getting added to a SharePoint document library, you do want to use when an item is created, not when a file is created in SharePoint, because then you don't get the ID of the item and you want that to create these links. So you want to start with when an item is created. And that's, of course, search hundreds. So we can go and do it from, from scratch here. Uh, SharePoint, that's the one we want to use. And when an item is created, that's the one we want. All right. So I want to get the site that I'm working on here, the HQ site, which is, by the way, um, modern communication site, but it could be any SharePoint site, of course. When you're Working with this when an item is created, you do not get library names suggested here. You just get the departments list. But you can work with document libraries also, but you do have to enter the name yourself. So I'm entering the procedures there, and then I'll create a new step. And the next step is to get the, the file properties. And that is, of course, a SharePoint action also. So once this is loaded now, I'll click on SharePoint and get file properties. That's the one I want. That gives me all the values that I want. And again, I want to use the same site address, of course, and the library name. Now I can select it here, the procedures. And then I want to use the ID of the item that was created, of course. That gives me the file. So now we can start sending emails. I'm going to do another action here. If you don't want to hard code so much, you could work with variables also. I will show in another demo how you work with variables. So we don't have to type in the, the URL all the time. That will, of course, make your flow much more reusable. But for this, I'm just going to hard code the URLs. All right. So now we're going to send an email. And that's the one right there. So let's use that one. And for now, I'm just going to send the email to myself. There we go. Peter, that's me. And that is a valid person and new procedure. And here I want to use the name of the file to get that. Let's see if I can find the name, file name of the item, and that is the name without the extension. Make sure that I have a space there. 
So that looks okay. And then I want the body. And in the body, I want to make sure that this is HTML. So I can switch that to SHTML. Yes, under advanced options. And now I want to start working with the body of the email. So let's just copy and paste the whole thing there. I usually copy and paste within the this window here works really badly. So you don't want to do that, but I'm going to make an exception for and just paste once. It should work just fine. I hope. Let's see that. So I'll go ahead and copy all of this from Visual Studio where I've done my very advanced HTML formatting here. Uh, but I'm not going to paste it directly from Visual Studio because what's going to happen then is that it's going to try to take the formatting also. So instead, I'm going to just bring up Notepad, old trusty Notepad, and just paste everything in there. And then I'm going to copy from there to make sure that I have no formatting enabled. And then I'll go into my flow and just uh, specify the body. And there are all the links. As you see, I still uh, got a lot of problems with the um, formatting, but it's slightly better at least. So l let's just clean this up a bit. So I don't have to type in everything. That's the first link, the edit do document. And then there is the um, show document properties right there. And then there's the edit doc properties, fine. And there's the version history, looking good. And there's the preview document. All right, moving on, let's see. And finally, we have the um, create alert. All right, so let's now uh, modify these links because now, of course, they're hard-coded. They will work as they are, but of course, I want them to link to the current document. So and let's go through all of this. I have the presentation here, which I want to show you. I want to go into the document edit first. So let's get started with document edit. So that's the first link here. And um, that is simply the link to item. So instead of this whole thing there, I can just take that away and instead add dynamic properties. And um, that would be the link to item. And that got into the wrong place. So let's take that away and make sure that I have the cursor in the right direction. There's the cursor and uh, link to item. All right. Now I have it in the right place. So that's done. Second one. Uh, is the document column values. And that is just the ID. That's the only parameter that we're getting. The rest of it is hard coded. We're taking the site URL, the list name, forms, this form for display form ASPX, of course, and then just the ID. So let's just remove the ID, make sure the, the cursor is there. And then we scroll down and click in the ID. Nope, it didn't look right at all. It didn't get to the right place. Let's try it again. There's the cursor. And let's try ID. Now it's in the right place. This editor is a bit tricky, but it works. So, but you just have to be a little bit careful with it. All right, so again, same thing with the display form. For, uh, the edit doc properties is, of course, going to the edit form.aspx. So there I will put the ID in there also. And that got into the right place. So we're moving along quickly here. The next one is the list item column values. So if I was working with a list instead, now I am working with the document library, the URL would be slightly different. It would point to lists, and it would not have the forms bit here. And make sure that when you enter this information, it points to the correct version of lists. Because if you're working in Swedish, it would be called listor. And so it's translated in the URL. So that's an important part. But otherwise, it's the same thing with, with lists. No forms, and then enter this lists thing there. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. And of course, the same thing with the edit form, lists, and no forms um, folder. All right, version history, slightly more complex. You hard code the site URL and then the layout and the folder 15 versions ASPX. And if you work a list, then you need to copy the list ID. And to get to the list ID of any list or library, 
Then you go into library settings or list settings. And here in the URL is the list ID. So let's go there. And here is the list ID. But when I'm working, when I'm working with a document library, I don't actually need that. So I can ignore that parameter, which I've done here in my flow also. I've ignored that parameter. I've just sent in the file name. And so this is the one we want to build. So let's look at how that is built. It's built with the, um, the site relative URL. I have typed that in. And then I do the folder path and the file name with extension. So that's what I want to put in. So this is the, the folder path. And then there's the file name with extension. So removing this part right there. Cursor is in the right place. Folder path. There we go. And file name with extension. Right. So now we have those two. And that's pointing to version history. All right. Moving on to the next one. Then we have the document preview mode, which is the one I'm using here for the PowerPoint presentation to the right. And that is, of course, very useful to, you know, get into read mode, not write mode right away. So this is slightly more complex. You have the site URL, the folder path, which you can get, and then the forms, all items, ASPX. And the all items is the default view. So it need, this link needs to point to an existing view. And so if you have removed or renamed the all items, then you need to point to another one. And then you're supplying the ID. And with the ID, it's the site relative URL and the folder path and the file name with extension. Then you also need to supply the parent parameter. And again, the site relative URL and the folder path. So you see the folder path and the file name uh, are the, the parameters I'm putting in here. I'm hard coding the site's HQ, as you see here, and I'm hard coding the URL. So let's go in and modify this. We'll start with this part here, the procedures. That's the first part I want to get. And that is, of course, the folder path. I did not get to the right place. Let's try it again. Make sure the cursor is in the right place. That's the one we want. And then we want this one again. Remove that one. Make sure the cursor is in the right place. Folder path. Cursor is in the right place. And then, of course, we want the file name with the extension. So I'm removing the bicycle sales there. And then entering the file name with extension. Cursor is in the right place. Yes, indeed. And that looks correct. All right. And then we do the same with the last folder path there. And using the folder path is, of course, important because you might have subfolders in your document library. So the folder path, you don't want to hard code that one. Because even if you try to teach your users not to use folders, they probably will. So we want to include that. But that didn't go right. So let's try it again. Cursor is in the right place. Yes, it is. Folder path. Now it got right. All right. So we're done with the preview document. And then we just have one more, the alert. And that just has an ID. I've hard-coded the list ID. And I showed you how to get that one from the library settings URL. And the only thing we want to change here is the ID of the current item. The cursor is in the right place. All right. And the ID. There we go. So we finally did this now. And now we have all the uh, URLs correct. So now we want to save this. And then we want to test it. And now I'll just perform the trigger action. Usually when I do these things, I test a lot of times. I do a test, and I do a test, and I do a test for every step to make sure everything goes correct. And then I'll use the same data for the previous rounds. But now I'll just upload a new file. So I'll go to the document library procedures here. Close that one for now. And I'll upload a new file. So let's do the merger letter then. It's not actually a procedure, but it will work as an example. So now it's uploaded, and let's go into my flow and see if it's running. Yes, it's run. So your flow ran successfully. Good. Let's go into the email. No procedure merger letter. And here I have my links. So let's try them all out. Edit document, 
takes me directly into edit mode in Word Online. Perfect, the way it's supposed to work. And then we do the show doc properties, exactly showing the document properties of that, just the name and the title in this case. And then we have the edit document properties or the column values of the metadata. Same thing, goes to the edit form and it's working well. And uh, version history, there's the version history. This is the first version, good. And then the preview documents. There I got an extra backslash. Let's try that. If that was the problem, that was the only problem. All right, so almost right on that one. That was the preview one. Let's fix that one later. And finally, the create alert. Yes, that one worked also. Excellent. So let's just fix the, that one error in the preview, edit. And where did we get that double? That's the preview document. Yes, this is the backslash. The folder path does include the backslash. So let's just remove that and we're good to go. So let's test it again. And using the same from the previous run, let's use that one. We should get another one. And here's the one. So let's check the preview document. And now that one is working. Excellent. All right. So now we have my flow and it will run automatically when an item is created and everything should work. One thing though that I want to warn about is that if somebody creates a new document here by creating the document directly in the document library, it will be created as document one or presentation one or workbook one. And of course, when you change that file name, the links will no longer work. So there are two ways of solving that. Either you teach all your users to upload the files They'll do that in most cases anyway. Or you put a um, delay in your flow so that it, it doesn't actually react directly. And there is a built-in delay anyway on, this, on the flows. It, they only run once every five minutes. So if that access is acceptable, then um, that might work. So that's a bit of a warning there. Otherwise, I think we're done with the demo. And thank you very much for watching.